Before we start the video today, I just want to remind everybody, whether you're a supporter of the channel or a viewer of the channel, to zip on over to my Patreon page. You don't have to be a patron to take a look at this, but if you scroll down when you go to the page, there is a video down here called 10,000 Subscribers Patrons Only. That is an awesome video. You need to watch it. I'm doing something really special for all of you that support me and for those of you who could become supporters in the future. So if you get a chance, when you get done watching this video, zip on over there. Like I said, scroll down to where it says 10,000 subscribers, and that's the video you want to watch. And while I have you all, I want to tell you thank you so much for re helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. Never thought I would be here. You guys have done so much for this channel, and I look forward to continually providing content that you like and welcoming new viewers to my channel. Once again, thank you guys so much for helping me reach 10,000 subscribers. You really don't know what it means to me. So now let's get to the video. Today we're going to be taking a look at a distribution that I believe with every new release becomes more and more attractive to the Linux user. The last time I looked at this one was about 90 days ago and that was still based on the December release. The one we're going to be looking at today is 2.2.0, which was released on June 2nd. And of course, I'm speaking of Nitrix. It's based on Debian Unstable, KDE Plasma and its frameworks, and app images. That's what we're going to be looking at today on eBuzz Central. Now, Nitrix is a very interesting distribution. Like I said earlier, it's based on Debian Unstable. And this is the brand new release of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to zip down here real quick and take a look at the release announcement. And it lets you know it's Nitrix 2.2.0. And it's got a lot of new things involved with it. It's going to come with the stable kernel by default, the 5.17.12 Xan Mod kernel, which is pretty awesome. And that's what it's going to come with instead of the 5.18.1 due to the package of Broadcom Stay DKMS failing to build the module. And then down here, they do offer alternatives. You can go with a non-LTS kernel repository. You can go with the Licorix kernel from the repository. And you can go with non-LTS Libre kernels from their repository. They give you those options right off the bat. That's why you got to pay attention to the release notes because they tell you the different things you can or can't do with this distribution. Of course, it is running KDE Plasma 5.24.5, but it's kind of customized, and we're going to take a look at that here in a second. They've bumped up to Firefox version 101.0, and then LibreOffice version 7.3.1.3. They've also added the ability for users to do a full disk encryption during installation when using the automated partition options in Calimares. They've also added two ISOs that include the NVIDIA proprietary drivers without their X11 configuration by default. Now you have to download those from a different area and I'll show that to you here real quick. And it lets you know the first of these ISOs includes the latest of the NVIDIA proprietary driver, which is 5.10.73.05. And the second of those ISO files is the legacy NVIDIA driver, which is 390.151. And then you can come down. They also have the Maui shell, which is something I'm really excited about. And they've also updated the Maui apps, the Maui kit, and the Maui kit frameworks to 2.1.2. And then you can come down here, and they've also stated that they've updated the NX Software Center to version 2.1.2. And all those new changes in the Software Center is the addition of the app repo, which is apprepo.de as a source, adding to the app image hub. We can come on down here. They also have a new Maui app, which is Bonsai, which is a quick Git control version manager. And then you come down here a little further and it says we've added a package that includes utilities to detect and configure printers automatically. They have removed Packstall and they have removed software update KCM. And then if you want to get the downloads, you can come down here. You've got the ISO right here, which is direct download from the server. And then you can download from their server, which is a minimal ISO. And then down here is with the latest NVIDIA and then with the legacy NVIDIA. This is where you go to download. Now, if you do decide to go with a torrent, you can click on FOSS Torrents and it'll bring you over here. And if you scroll down, you can get the regular editions right here and then you can get the minimal. And then if you want the 
latest NVIDIA drivers, you can get that from right here, or the NVIDIA Legacy, you can get that from right here. So you do have alternatives for your downloads, especially if you're somebody that's like me that would rather use torrents than a regular direct download. So what we're going to do real quick, we've looked through all that, we're going to zip on over to the desktop. Now, if you download Nitrix, throw it on a USB, open it into a virtual machine, this is the desktop you're met with. Like I said earlier, it's based on KDE and KDE Frameworks 5.24.5, and it's got a decent looking customization feel and look to it. You've got a top panel up here that does have a little bit of transparency, and then you do have a dock down here. Now, if you just right click on the screen, you're gonna get configure desktop, display settings, things like that. First thing I wanna look at is different wallpapers. I know you all always make fun of me in the comments. Why are you so worried about wallpapers, blah, blah, blah. It kind of helps with me because I like the way my operating system looks. I like form and function, quite honestly, and I like it when it looks good. And you can tell it's got some very specific wallpapers. Not a lot of the out-of-the-box KDE that you're used to seeing, but you do get some pretty wallpapers. So let's change that over. I like that one. I think I'm going to leave that one up. So you do get a few wallpapers there. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And if you come down to the bottom, you've got an app menu right here. You click on it and all your apps are brought up right here. I'm going to go ahead and back out of that. And then, of course, you've got your different desktops. you got desktop one, two, three, and four. You can also add as many as you want right there. You could do a search right here for files. you got recent files, locations, file search, files association. I like that. It's different. It just doesn't pop up on the screen. You actually got to go to it. Some people like it better when you can just do it on the screen. I'm one of those that likes to bring it up when I need it. So that's just my preference. And then, of course, you've got a file manager. Let's go ahead and open that up. And as you can see, it's got a little different look than you're used to with other file managers. It's more icon based. If you come up top here, you've got your favorites. You've got files that you have tagged. You've got your home directory, of course. Then you have desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, and then, of course, your videos. Your trash is down here, remote, and then your Nitrix removable, and then your drives. Now, if you right-click down here, nothing happens. You're used to when you're on KDE or your friend Dolphin, you can come down here and make changes to it. But this pretty much just gives you everything you need right out of the box. It's got a better aesthetic feel to it, in my opinion. And when I have worked with it, it's made things quite easy. It stayed out of my way and let me get my work done. So that's what's important to me. And then if you come up top, you've got some different buttons up here. You can close. You can maximize. And then, of course, you can minimize to dock. And then, of course, close. So you got kind of a global menu feel up here. And then if you come back down to the bottom, you've got your nitric store. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we will go ahead and maximize that so you can see everything. And we will give it just a second to populate everything. And everything has been populated. And you can kind of take a look around here. You've got programming, system tools, audio, office, video. You've got categories right here. And then if you've got your Maui apps right here that they're working on. And then you can come down here. You've got your newest apps. You've got notebooks, popular games if you want to download games and that's something you're into. Popular audio. And then you've got LibreWolf, Belina Etcher, Brave Browser. You can scroll down a little more. That's one thing that has bothered me is I haven't been able to figure out how to make my mouse wheel scroll faster. But that's nothing major, especially because most of the time when I use it, I'm using it on a laptop. And I can scroll rather easy on my laptop. As you can see right there, I'm using the touchpad on my laptop and everything scrolls really fast. And that's some issue sometimes on different Linux distributions, you just have to find a workaround to make your mouse wheel scroll a little faster. Now you've got your store right here. If you click on this button right here, it lets you know whatever apps you might have installed. But I am running in a live environment, so it might not show all of those. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can might be able to do a search. And I don't think I can. We're going to see real quick. I put in OBS and it brought up a lot of other things and there is OBS right there. So it doesn't bring it directly to the top, but it is right there on the same page that I put it in. Now, my question is, most of the time you have to put studio 
And if you put in OBS Studio, I don't know if that would bring it to the top or not. And it does. It brings it right there. So let's go ahead and click on that. And you've got the different packages down here. It's available to download. You could scroll down and get some more information about it. It is available in an app image, a regular app, or the app repo. So you got three different places here to get it. So that's pretty nice. So let's go ahead and go back to the main page, to the store. And let's see if we can find something like Caden Live. Caden Live. And it pops up right there and it is an app image. And then you do have a regular app right here. So you have an easy way to get software on Nitrix. And it's got a beautiful store, one of the best looking stores in a Linux distro, in my personal opinion. If you disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to go ahead and close out of this right now. Then we come back down to the bottom. We have Firefox. You have your Nitrix text editor. Let's go ahead and open that up so you can take a look at it. And it's got a nice clean look that goes along with the rest of the operating system. Let's go ahead and close out of that. Come back down here. You've got your music, your videos, and then of course your settings. Let's go ahead and open settings up. And let's go ahead and maximize that so everybody can see it. And as you can see right here, it's got kind of an old layout as opposed to the KDE line that you usually see over there on the left on the column. You've got kind of a global menu up here. It gives you information about KDE, about icon. Can you change the layout? You can. See, there's your old school KDE layout if that's what you wanted. Or you can go back to the icon view. That's really up to you. But anybody that knows KDE knows that you've got a plethora of things over here that you can do. I'm going to go on down here and I'm going to look at About System. Right now it lets you know you're running KDE Plasma version 5.24.5, KDE Frameworks 5.94, and the kernel version is 5.17.12, which is the Xan Mod kernel. And you are running in X11. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out of settings. We will come back down here to the bottom. And what I want to do right now is we're going to open up the app window. And you've got Arc. You've got Bonsai, Buho, Clip, Install Nitrix, Nota, which is your text editor we just saw a while ago. NitroShare is really awesome. If you open up NitroShare, they still have that bug. When I looked at this previously about three months ago, my problem with this application right here was that the text right here you can barely see it it should be darker it should be you know a different color it's a lot harder to read but it says nitro Sarah is a desktop application that makes it easy to transfer files from one device to another and it really is easy i've used it i've used it on a daily basis i just wish they would fix this right here so i'm going to go ahead and close out of nitro share and we'll come back down to the apps You've got LibreOffice, Spectacle for your screenshot, then your system monitor, and then Station is your terminal. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And what I want to do is I want to see if they have HTOP installed, and they do. I've got 4 gigabytes of RAM issued to this machine at present with just the terminal open for the desktop to be up. You're using about a gigabyte. Now I'm going to have people in the comments go, that's way too heavy, but I disagree. I mean, if you're running just a base Windows install, you're using anywhere from three to four gigs just to have a desktop up. So if you've got an older system, this will still run fine on it. A gig for having your desktop up is not much at all. That's my personal opinion. It is what it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. We'll go back down here. And you've got your picks and station we just looked at, system monitor, system settings, and wave. Now for some reason, in this version that I just downloaded, uh, when you log out to go open the Maui shell, it doesn't come up. I don't know if I missed something or if it's not included in this release because they're doing something different. I'm not really sure, but I do want to say that if you get a chance to zip on over, download Nitrix, throw it on a USB and open it in a virtual machine, you will not be disappointed. It's a great distribution. It is a very beautiful distribution, and I think it definitely is getting better with every single release. Tell me what you think. Is this something you might download, though, on a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, you can become a member right here on YouTube, become a patron to the channel over on Patreon, 
buy us a coffee, or throw us a donation on PayPal. I would also like to thank today's video sponsors, producer Miss Lop Kralesa, Mitchell Valentino, VIP sponsors Matthew Gower, Antoine Wilk, all excess sponsors are Eugene Lee, Leonard McQueen, Mike DePolis, and sponsors and members Nitrix, Cato Gosted, Chad Jones, and Keith Hefner. If you like today's video, here's a couple more for you to take a look at. I generally cover Linux and open source. Sometimes I might do a little Windows bashing. Once again, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.